And so I was wondering if we could talk about some of the the challenges that you were facing and how you've been able to to address them sort of in this post or post emergent pandemic period. Let me set up the context here that you know during the early part of the pandemic the whole world started operating completely in in a completely different manner. We all became very comfortable with being online. We we all became uh, very comfortable of uh, using the internet uh, to to a greater com- uh, a greater uh, potential including commerce and uh, including communication and including work and we start talking about like hey maybe in the future we all going to be working uh, from homes or remotely or uh, you know uh, the need for human uh, interaction uh, it can be you know overcome by uh, using the uh, internet in fact we start talking about like let's optimize everything to match what happens in real life uh, you know as as a substitute for uh, being in real life nobody kind of believed that but then quarter after quarter uh, uh you know a graph going up in a certain way after a graph going up a certain way we started saying like oh my god this is going to last forever uh this is going to be the new way the, you you've heard like the new way of we work the new new way we communicate the new like it's a new world uh, uh and and so on and and after 2 years all this new stuff in your head becomes the normal uh things and then the pandemic ended whether it's actually ended on its own or the whole world collectively decided that we're done with this uh, pandemic thingy it's out nobody could have predicted that we come out of the pandemic with complete loss of the momentum all the way to the negative side instead of us going like oh let's go see how much this momentum of this uh, new way of us working and communicating and dealing with each other will last uh, we hit a recession we hit uh, you know a conflict in europe we hit uh, you know uh, people uh, still uh, we're in this weird state where there was a labor market shortage but at the same time uh, inflation was going up like crazy and we saw how like uh, the people reporting financial results were like uh, below expectation and then the market started the stock market went up from uh, being great and unbelievable to uh, going down uh, so it was almost like a 180 uh, reversal on on many the way that we measured how things have changed and that was the major challenge that we we had to go through so i think as human beings the first thing we said oh that's an anomaly that's an outlier we're going to have a v-shaped recovery kind of deal you know like you don't believe it you don't uh, accept it uh, and then after the q4 results from many many companies in our industry we're like let's see what happened in the q1 results well guess what that start reconfirming that this new normal uh, is being replaced quickly by something completely different that we've never seen it uh, before people start talking about like well let's go back to pre-pandemic conditions those pre-pandemic conditions are not there uh, it's it's like we're coming from a new reality to a new new reality um and and so this is what happened here in our challenge in time and if you add a couple more quarters we are still you know operating at the bottom part of uh, all the numbers in terms of uh, people start talking about not hiring as much as they used to hire versus labor shortage people start talking about increasing focus people start talking about like how we're going to get back to uh, better uh, revenue and better profitability uh, economical conditions uh, uh, now uh, uh, you know considered to be we're in a bear market kind of deal so that change was very very surprising to many people i'm willing to bet you nobody predicted that we'll come out of the pandemic to a bear market most people said ah oh, maybe we'll go back to a flat but not a very negative uh, environment um and so from that um lots of the challenges we had to go deal with is like how do we adapt to this environment how do we go deal in this uh, uh how we navigate through the fog uh, basically and, and the fog keeps getting thicker uh, not not lighter um and and that's what we are today we 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 still navigating through the fog we're still dealing with it slowly but surely uh but uh that's at least my assessment of uh, uh you know the major change that nobody expected coming out of the pandemic
how do you refocus the team or organization to to move forward or or come together after like periods of of uncertainty or like dealing with sort of these like challenging environments where you have to make really significant changes? Um, how do you help the team move forward from things like that? What I found that what's working so far is many people will uh, look at leadership as uh, all of a sudden they're equipped with a magic wand that will wave and then all of a sudden the stock price will go up and the number will go up and the economy will be better and everything will be wonderful. And they start like uh, scrutinizing every decision the leadership makes. Um, um, and uh, and rightly so, right? Because they're they're in an uncomfortable position. They're they're uh, they they saw certain things and uh, going in a certain way, and they got comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden, you know, it feels like somebody pulled the rug from underneath them. And the key thing in here is to go back and remind everybody that we achieved whatever we achieved in the past because we were a team not because of somebody made its decision in a certain way, but because we all collectively work well with each other. And that's how what we need to do to go through this uh, tough, challenging and uncharted waters is we actually have to come together as a team and work together uh, as a team, and then we will figure it out. Um, And then the second part is you emphasize on resiliency and adaptability, and they go together. Uh, and so what that really means, you say like, look, times are tough. They, they, they're, they're not going to change overnight. Who's in charge? You or the environment? You or these circumstances? Well, it's you. So you is all of us. Let's get together. Let's figure out like we actually we have to collectively make the determination that we're going to go through these times, uh, tough times together. So without that, it doesn't matter. Expect that these times going to be tough and expect uh, we ex- uh, you know expect that the, uh, all of us need to work well with each other to go through them once you achieve that foundation then you can build on top of that is like what can we do now together differently what got us here is not what's going to carry us forward okay what are the changes what are the ideas how we you know time is not going to fix this thing we're going to do the fix this thing so waiting is not an option and let's go work uh, with that new mindset in place and and then uh, and then address it i think for the most of the part is uh, at least meta and i'm guessing many other companies i don't know for sure are over the hump of uh, like let's get the, the all the teams to un- understand that the uh, this is a new reality. This is a new challenge. And then we need to put the teams together. And us as a team, as a whole company, we will figure it out together. And I think we're you know, entering the next phase, probably in the next three months to six months, where you're going to see lots of people figuring out how to be more adaptable, how to come up with new ideas, how to uh, come out of uh, the stuff uh, period with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, different approaches, uh, different technology, different way of thinking. And then uh, hopefully that will be part of the turnaround story rather than waiting for the turnaround. The turnaround never comes uh, on a, by waiting. The turnaround happens when you push for it and you make the turnaround yourself.